Hey, welcome back. It's Eric Arnold here on Tuesday, the 2nd. The 2nd? No, it's the 3rd. The 3rd of August. I knew it was uh, not the 2nd. Whatever. Uh, here to bring you a free MLB pick, singular. Uh, we're very busy right now, so in an effort to be all things to all people, we're going to throw a quick and dirty video together for you. Uh, for nothing else, just to give Pittsburgh Louie a chance uh, to post his picks, give him a vehicle, an attempt at redemption. He got destroyed last night, unfortunately, uh, getting trapped by some of these huge favorites. Did I not say the words uh, that betting Toronto was insane at that price last night? I mean, for God's sakes, when did Toronto get so damn good? You know, what justifies them getting these outrageous odds? The Yankees, too. I mean, and those were the two teams that he got burned on. Uh, I don't want to, you know, come down on Pittsburgh Louie, especially since his record's better than mine is. Uh, but I don't know. The, the, those, I've done it myself. You know, you know there's a team there that's overvalued. You know it. Uh, but that spot, that individual spot, just looks so damn tasty and good. Like, how can they possibly lose to the blank? And, and then they go and do it. Why? Because they're overvalued. Because they suck. And, and you know, Louie got caught last night. So, um, that's too bad. Uh, our only pick was a winner uh, with uh, San Francisco. We got lucky. Uh, they got out to a huge lead and then blew it, uh, but, you know, they dug in there in the 10th inning and uh, got the job done. Uh, Buster Posey, I haven't looked it up, but does he have Hall of Fame numbers? This guy just strikes me as, you know, this dude's been just great for a decade at a tough position, catcher. And he won the game last night with a key hit the 10th inning. So, any rate, all I got is one pick for you here today. Uh, before I get to that, the part of why I want to make the video is just because I want to talk about a couple things here. Um, and you're saying, oh no, here comes politics. Yes, here comes politics. But before I get to that, I did want to cover like some good news in case you haven't seen this. Um, and you probably haven't because it deals with the Olympics. And the Olympics have been this kind of sort of hidden thing that's going on in the middle of the night. That NBC will show you little snippets here and there of events. Particularly if it involves an American or an American with a cute story. Um, you know, then they'll show you the event. Uh, I know right away if I'm like watching and there's some off, you know, the map event on like weightlifting, then I know, well, there must be an American that did well on it because otherwise they'd never show me this. So, you know, right away, but the 400 men's uh, hurdles, uh, this used to be, you know, a huge event in the Olympics, at least for us again, because uh, Edwin Moses was the unbeatable American when I was a kid. You know, he was in the late 70s, early 80s, I guess. He was a guy that never lost. <laughs> he just, I, he had some ridiculous uh, winning streak where this dude just never lost. So that's the event we're talking about here. And they had a race for the gold medal, the final, that was just unbelievable. I mean, I didn't see it live. I missed it. I, I, but I saw the replay, and it was just an unbelievable race. One of these races that will go down in history as uh, uh, one of those Olympic events, like Bob Beeman's long jump, maybe Bruce Jenner in the decathlon. Yeah, well, he was Bruce back then. I can call him that, right? Isn't that crazy as hell? The guy that won the Olympic gold medal in the decathlon turns into a woman it's still unbelievable to me but at any rate i didn't mean to go there but um back to the 400 meter hurdles you got two guys in this race you got the champion i guess or the favorite the champion he's a norwegian guy uh warholm uh, it's like warhol andy warhol with an m on it i think warholm 
he's the Norwegian. He's the favorite, I guess. He's the record holder, the champion. And then you got an American, uh, Rod Benjamin. Uh, I think I pronounced that right. So he's he's almost as good as the Norwegian. In fact, he probably could have beat the Norwegian in one of the semifinal uh, heats. But nobody cares about that because it doesn't matter. So neither guy is really going all out. All they got to do is finish in the top two or three to get to the final. So they're not really, you know, maxing out in that semifinal race. So the world record going into this race is 46 seconds. 46. Can you see that? 46.7 seconds. That's the world record going into this race. So Benjamin, he runs a fantastic race, runs faster than he's ever run in his whole life, comes in in 46-14 and gets beat. <laughs> the Norwegian just, he went like a house of fire the whole race. Benjamin caught him in the stretch and it just couldn't get by him. And the Norwegian pulled away 45.94 for a new world record. 45.94. That's never been done before in that event. 45.94. Unbelievable. So both guys smashed the old record. And Benjamin's just sitting there in disbelief after the race is over going, I just ran faster than I thought I could ever run, and this guy dusted me. How is that possible? So this is just like, you know, this is a Bob Beeman type event where, you know, you smash the old record so badly that that record will probably stand for 20, 30 years before somebody else breaks it. You know, it was just incredible. Um, yeah, that's why you watch the Olympics where you, you, you might see, it doesn't happen very often. You know, that's probably the only event like the, the, this whole cycle that you'll have like that, where you have just two guys that are just great. You know, usually you, you might have one great guy. Oftentimes you have no great guys. You just have, you know, a bunch of good athletes and somebody's got to win. But every now and then you get a great guy. And then once in a blue moon, you get two great guys. And the two great guys hook up and push each other way beyond things that anyone thought was possible. So that's incredible. So that was exciting. I enjoyed that. Um, look that up, uh, you know, in whatever media NBC allows you to see it on. The men's 400 hurdle meter final and uh, look up uh, Warholm and Benjamin. Uh, what a great race. World record smashed. Way to go. All right, what else? Uh, I'll show you this. My father was here this weekend. I get weird shit from my father. I, I showed you my, my grill implement. That is like the fourth or fifth one of these I've gotten because he gets these things for free in the mail because God knows what he buys. And they throw that in as a free gift. So then he re-gifts it to me. He showed me this he got in the mail. This is money from Venezuela. You know, this is a $50 bill, or I guess they call them bolivars. I looked that up. A 50 bolivar uh, bill here. Here's a hundred uh, from Venezuela. Um, so these are, you know, these are nicely printed. They're got some birds there on the back. Uh, nicely printed, uh, feels like real money. You know, the high class linen uh, money kind of paper there. They got some kind of little colored bar there. So you know it's not counterfeit, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> that it's not printed by somebody other than the uh, Banco Central de Venezuela. So I looked this up, of course. I was like, wow, I just got 150 boulevards. What's this worth? This is literally not worth the paper it's printed on, even though this is official money. Um, you look it up, one U.S. dollar is worth approximately 400 billion of those boulevards. 
So that's communism for you. That's Marxism. I keep saying Marxist, Marxism, Marxism, communism. All you, know, all you people out there that are under 50 years old are going, well, what's that mean? That's some ancient hokey religion like you know, Star Wars or something. No, communism is a real theory. It's a real uh, form of government. And that's what you have when you get a communist government. It, it, you have economic chaos. You have money doesn't count. It doesn't mean anything. It has no value because they just spend money uh, like it's going out of style. So everybody has a billion dollars. You know, these things have no value. You can just burn them. It doesn't matter. They, you can't buy anything with them unless you have a note that has like 17 zeros on it, of which I'm sure there are some. Uh, so that's communism. Come into a bank near you anytime. All right, I had another thing here, but I'll hold that one till tomorrow, I think, just because I need to get other things done. Here is our pick for today. There, can you read that? We're going to go with Cleveland again. That's our only play. We'll, uh, well, what the hell? We'll come right back with them. Look, that number's just way too high uh, for the Blue Jays. I know they're pitching Rue, and he's their ace, if you will. But then the Indians aren't pitching one of their jabronis. They're pitching one of their better guys. They're pitching Plesak. You're getting plus 185 with Plesak? Yes, please. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, you know, to me, the Indian or the Blue Jays throwing Robbie Ray last night and him getting beat—that's got to deflate them. I think they're—they're—they're they're, they're just. You know, I, I think this is a team that just thinks it's better than what it is. They have all this unbelievable young talent. You know, you gotta. It's got to build, it's got to mesh, it's got to mature. It's not happening at the moment. You guys are not as good as you think you are. And the Indians are not a terrible team. Even after the trade deadline and they sold some guys off, they still have some threats in that lineup. You know, they, they, They're not missing Cesar Hernandez. Uh, you got Fran Mill Reyes, he's still in there. Jose Ramirez hit a huge home run last night for their W. So you still got some real threats in the Indian lineup. You got Plesak on the mound. That Indians bullpen is still good. That's not that's an above 500 team. Even now, that is an above 500 team. Plus 185? Yes, please. I'll take that. That's all we have for you. Thanks. Hit the like button. Um, look for Pittsburgh Louis picks in the uh, comment section. Uh, good. Glad to be here. We'll do the best we can. Very busy at the moment, but we'll do the best we can to get you some entertainment, get you some content. Good job. Thanks for uh, being here. We'll uh, see you later. Eric Arnold signing off.